All right, we're in business. All right, girl. Cool. So what a way to, this is launch week. This is launch week for me and the team. And I'm sure you guys too, right? Getting ready for the new year. I love the new year and everyone's got the good energy around it. Everyone's like, even if they had the worst 2020 ever, they're ready for new energy, new everything. So we're yeah, so ready. I'm we're so ready. And I am, I have to say, I'm so grateful for you. I want you to introduce yourself properly in a second. But I have to say, like, this is the highlight. It's my birthday week, actually. This is my birthday present. Hanging Happy out with birthday. you. Oh, I'm your birthday gift. Yeah, my, my birthday present, girl. I better, I better really bring it here on this interview then for you. No, I, I know you will. <laughs> Listen, I first met you on, like, virtually in my ear earphones when I was running. And Eric Corey was interviewing you on the podcast. And then a week later, I'm attending virtual GoPro. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, this, I needed this girl in my life. So thank you so much for, for being who you are. And typically I introduce my guests, but one thing that you're so phenomenal at is owning it. So mm -hmm. I thought, can you introduce yourself and just show everyone like how to boss up and own who you are? Sure. So I'll just do my intro. I always do, which is hello, hello, everybody. What's going on? It's Jesse Lee. Call me hashtag boss Lee. Uh, no, I, I'm a, serial entrepreneur. I live here in Frisco, Texas, just north of Dallas. Uh, this is not where I'm originally from, though. I am originally from a really small country town in Middletown, Maryland, and I grew up in poverty. So I was the girl that really just didn't have anything, didn't have the clothes that fit, didn't have the cool stuff, didn't have even enough food, and was raised by my Nana and my granddad, which thank God for them, because that allowed me to do things like play clarinet. I don't really talk about that that much, but play clarinet and go to church and do all these things and really see that there was a life outside of the struggle that I was living in my childhood. So when I was nine years old, I sent my dad to jail and became the leader of my household, which ended up being one of the biggest blessings of my life because it put me on this path of you sink or you swim. Like, where are we going to go from here? Mm -hmm. And so um, followed in, in the footsteps of I had to go to college because that was the right thing to do since I was raised by the generation that's a little older, graduated top of my class, got a job out of college, even in 2010 when we were still recovering from the 2008 recession. And it was just not enough. So mm -hmm. I don't know who's listening to this and can relate to that, but it was just not enough. And every two weeks I was going a little more broke and not because I was spending frivolously and not because I was fancy and not because, no, no, no. Um, because it was not enough. <laughs> it was not enough. The system was quite frankly broken. And I, I love this time of year. So it's your birthday week. You called it launch week. Um, but I got to tell you for me, this, this week has a special place in my heart because in 2010, 10 years ago, this week really was my launch week. It was the, this is my new year, new me. I'm going to be the person that I am going to change everything about my life. Like it was me. Um, and I made that decision then that January, 2011, I was going to buy the starter pack for the at-home business that I Googled. I was going to go all in. I was going to get made fun of. I was going to fail forward. I was going to be a student. And um, I, I jumped in head first, just needing $300 a month to pay rent. Yeah. And now I am one of the top earners of all time in network marketing. I'm definitely the top 0.0001%. I feel super blessed to have gone from the basement of a home in Middletown, Maryland to a multi-million dollar home here in Texas, living quite frankly, my dream life in um, a very short period of time. If you really, if you really think about it. So I feel like you blink and your life changes, but uh, that's me in a nutshell. I'm a dog mom, whatever. I got God <laughs> babies. I love it so much. I'm very involved in, in my God children's lives. And yeah, that's yeah. me. That's me. I was watching your Insta stories and you got your dog some more acres coming for them to run, but you're not sure if they're going to use it. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, they're not really, uh, they are always close by. They are right here. They don't go very far, but <laughs> I got mine right here. She does not leave this lap. So this is where, <laughs> so so I'll get the acres and Kumba will be like, mom. Mom, we coming? <laughs> Amazing. So you touched on some really important things just even in that intro, right? But it's like that not enough, right? And it's not because you're not grateful. It's just, you knew that there was more. There was, you knew that there was a bigger impact for you to make. And here's the thing is that you, you for me, 
personally, and this is why you're such a gift to me, like just from what I've experienced and hundreds of thousands of people is that you help us to raise the bar, to think bigger, to expand what's possible. I'm also from a little town, little small town girl here, right? And didn't come from, um, didn't come from, it came from humble beginnings, we'll say. Humble beginnings, you know, two hardworking parents, but absolutely their hard work, that system was broken and it wasn't enough. But here's the thing right now is how can we invite people who are listening? And to, this is the Ambitious Mama podcast. So there's, you know, primarily women, primarily moms, but, you know, definitely there's some dads that tune in as well and maybe women who maybe will be moms, but we're all mamas in some way, mom, dog mamas, whatever. But how can we invite people to, to, to like say, I dare you to dream a little bigger? Like, how do you push that button for someone? Can you push it for someone? How can you invite them to want more? So that's a really cool question. Uh, and I think, <laughs> I think there's a lot of dads who probably listen because their wives are like playing in the background. I love seeing the videos of the husbands listening to my podcast. They're like sitting there like, oh my God. <laughs> or I get the DMs from them. Like, anyway, I love it. So there's definitely <laughs> for sure. But uh, inviting people to say, I dare you to dream. I mean, again, it's the perfect time of year to talk about it. But in general, it's like, I ask people this a lot. Why not you? Mm -hmm. there, there's a reason I tend not to show up fancy or, you know, full face of makeup or perfect outfits or whatever. Um, I don't, I do it on purpose. I do it on purpose because people need to see that there's a different way to do things mm -hmm. and whatever has been tugging on their heart. It is the right way. That is your intuition calling you. That is your intuition saying you're not too old enough. You're not too young enough. You're not too or, or, or your, whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's that inner calling, that inner voice that says, just go. And a question that was asked to me maybe maybe you know, nine years ago, because I was kind of dabbling. I was doing the, oh, I'm making a couple thousand dollars a month thing, which is great, which is great. Like, again, I started wanting $300 a month. So I wasn't uh, planning on it being this. Um, but somebody said, well, what is your, well, there are two situations. First of all, somebody said, you know, what would your life look like if you were making $12,000 a month? And I don't know why they asked that question, but it ended up being one of my closing lines I used all the time. Cause I'd look at you and be like, okay, Krista, talk to me. Like, where did that New York come from? Talk to me. <laughs> like I you live there for a while, but it never comes out. So that was strange, but I want to know what does your life really look like? Like, what car are you driving? And don't just say I'm driving an Escalade. There's a lot of models. Like, I want to know what does the leather smell like? What color is it? What is the outside? Do you have rims on it? Like, does that car have shoes? But you know, like, I want to know everything. And so that really got me dreaming. The second thing that really changed my perspective on so many things is I will never forget. I was at a, it's, this is the time of the year. You nailed it at the beginning of this, I swear. But I was sitting in somebody's house. I, her name was Dana. I still remember. I'm in Dana's house. I guess it was a bad month. We're sitting kind of around a the table. There's maybe 10, 12 people in her house. And somebody said, I still remember her name. Her name was Christina. Christina goes, Dana, what was your check last month? And I'm over here making 1500, 2000 a month. I'm like, I'm cool, man. I got my full-time job. I'm cool, man. You know, like how much money y'all need was really in my mind. Uh, yeah. I wasn't having the audacity. I dare you to dream. Like you said, I wasn't doing that. I was like, this is cool. I got, I got two extra thousand dollars a month. Like y'all are greedy with your money. Right. <laughs> and she, she goes, so what was your month like? And Dana's like, oh, it wasn't a good month. It was December, blah, blah, blah. And she goes, my check, my check was $36,000. And I went, I'm like, I'm like, that's a salary. Like, what do you mean your month? It was a bad month was $36,000, which now I don't know. I, I, I have staff. I pay more. Like I, I wouldn't be able to function off of it, which is crazy. Cause that's not even a decade ago. But I'm like, Whoa, mm -hmm. some of you that are listening to this need to understand that the limit does not exist. No, I coach this a lot. The limit does not exist. So yeah. whatever this cap is that you're putting on your goals, your hopes, your dreams, your ambitions, your, I like the word ambition for you, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever it is that you're saying, the limit doesn't exist unless it's in your mind. So like yeah. when I think of things like concerts, people talk about their concerts of like, oh, it starts with this many people, that many people. I mean, I think about looking, I've seen pictures of Woodstock, you know, 100,000 people, but why not you? Yeah. 
you just have to see things differently. You yeah. have to understand there, there wasn't a four minute mile till there was a four minute while yes. there wasn't a Woodstock yes. until there was a Woodstock. There weren't the Beatles until there were the Beatles. Lady Gaga mm -hmm. wasn't Lady Gaga till there was Lady Gaga. Beyonce yeah. wasn't Beyonce till there was Beyonce. Like the network marketers, it used to be, oh my God, she makes a hundred thousand dollars a year. Oh my God. Right. And then it turns out, oh my God, they're making a million dollars a year. And then it turns into, oh my God, six figures a, or, uh, yeah, six figures a month. Oh my God. Oh my God. Like people were nuts about six. Now it's like, now the standard of the leaders that people are blown away by, these people are making a minimum of half a million a month. Yeah. And are making a million, a million, two million. We know people, I know in my telephone, I have a friend, he texted me this morning, making $5 million last month. Like I, <laughs> the oh, wow. limit doesn't exist. So oh my gosh. whether you're using network marketing as your platform, a business, you know, that, that you started that's traditional business, whether it's, you know, whatever your vision is for where you want to go in your life. I just, I need people to know that the only restrictions that are existing are the ones that are the self self inflicted implications on your mind. And so, um, do, how do you invite people to dream? You just show them what's show them. possible. You just show yeah. them. Yes. You're going to be nervous. You're going to be scared. You're going to fail. You're going to probably barf a lot. The whole concept of blood, sweat, and tears is 100% real. I mean, like the blood, I like cut my finger on boxes. Sometimes. It's nothing like really dramatic, but like I've had a paper cut. Okay. I'm calling blood. Um, like, it's real. It's so it true. Is, it is whatever, but there's no reason it can't be you. There's no reason it can't be your family. There's no reason it can't be your children that you get to put in you know, whatever school it is you want them to go to. You want your kid to be the best hot, you're Canadian. So the best hockey player on earth, you need to get him some coaches. You yeah. can afford it, mama. Like yeah. you want your kids to have the best nutrition. You can, they don't mm -hmm. need to be eating gummy bears and fruit roll-ups. You know, you can give them meal prep if you want to. I don't know. That might be a little far-fetched, but the, to, to dare to dream is just put yourself in those shoes for a minute of what it might be like. I want you to, mm -hmm. you know, close your eyes and see the house, the cars, the trips, the the donations, the giving back, whatever it is. And I say that as somebody who I give back hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. I see That's it. My favorite part of all of it. So, however you want to contribute, whether it's to your family or to the families that are directly impacted by your voice, just know that exists here. Yes, so, yes, yes. I know that was a really long answer, but like, I just, I'm very passionate about that because it starts with the dream. It starts yeah. with the, what if it is me? It starts with the, do I have the audacity to be that person? Mm -hmm. And when you do have the audacity to be that person, crazy things can happen. Absolutely. And the thing is, is that you and I had something and have something in common that we had to kind of get out of our comfort zone each way and like be around people who thought bigger and to see people who were moving bigger mountains and things like that. And, but here's the dangerous thing that I think a lot of people could relate to is that we reach a certain level of success. So the few thousand per month or whatever it is, and you're like, I know how to do this business, right? I know how to do this. And it's like, there should be a flashing warning signal that says like, warning, entering comfort zone, but, but there's not. And you're just like, and you're the top dog in whatever you do. And people are like, teach me how to do it. Teach me how to do it. At that point, it is thousand percent your job to do things. Like for me, it was like to go to GoPro and be like, whoa, okay. I see a much bigger picture for myself. And I'm like one of the main trainers within the company that I work with. Right. And I think that's a really important message for us to, to shake things up so that we can, so we can see people who are making a bigger impact. The fact that you just, you know, on a, on a Wednesday or whatever it was, you donated $20,000, like it was nothing, right? I want to do that. And I think we need, that's why whatever profession everyone's in is like, we need to make sure that we're not falling into that trap of like, that you're, you're great at what you do. Great. How can we be more impactful? I'll just tell you, get around get around people that expand your vision. Yeah. You know, every time I think I'm doing well, 
Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. That's I've what you did for me. People where I'm like, girl, you are tripping. You are lazy. You need to get up. You need to do more. You need to create more. You need to be more. Like I've got the, and, and here's the thing is people are like, well, how do I get around those people? People sometimes make excuses. Like those people don't want to spend time around me. I'm like, those people cannot stop you from consuming their social media. Content. Exactly. Those exactly. people like, clearly you're, I love it. You're like this on a Wednesday. You I love it. so cool. Like, you, I can't stop you from listening to my, to my podcast. I can't stop you from watching me on at GoPro. I can't stop you from, um, you know, following me wherever, like my mentors, they weren't my friends until they were, mm -hmm. you know, I was not impressive to them. There are plenty of people. Like when I get reached out to by some of these big, you know, when I see like, well, I mean, I, I guess I have the blue check now too, but like, I would have the blue, like I'd see, I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. Like when Trent Shelton texts, he texted me, Merry Christmas. I'm like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> I still, you know, but like, these are people, whoever it is for you. Like, I want you to get around the people who expand whatever it is for you. And mm -hmm. it's not going to be your circle of friends who, you know, from elementary, middle and high school, maybe even college who, you know, they got their dream job and they're making 40 grand a year. And if they're happy, awesome. But most of them aren't. And you're, you're spending every Friday night with them, Saturday with them, Sunday on the couch with them, watching football, whatever. Like those people on the TV are the ones living their dreams. Those NFL players are living their dreams. I'm like making up something they would be watching, right? Go, go live your dreams. Go surround yourself with people who make you feel like, wow, I could be doing more. It's yes. in it, in it. Maybe it is the people you went to high school with, but I'm going to guess it probably isn't. So yeah. find virtual ways to get around the people who expand your vision, find virtual ways to get around the people who make you feel like, man, I'm really not doing much. Consume the billionaires, consume the people who have the real estate you want, consume the people who speak like you want to, who train like you want to, who it just looks effortless to them. It's effortless to them because they've been doing it for decades. Yes, absolutely. They're better than you. It's because they put in the hours. Yeah. You know? Like you can, you can own your success and still, you know, cut yourself a big old slice of humble pie each morning because like there's so much room for us to grow and, and I mean, you, like I said, like you, that's what you have given me so much. So thank you. Again, I have it all written all over ever in my house. There's little papers of my, my, what I'm creating this year and it's going to blow everyone's mind. So I love it. Cause like the, you're a perfect example. Like we live nowhere near each other. You're like, I'm just going to give you some props really fast. This is our first conversation. <clears throat> and like, you know, me, Yeah. you know, me, you're talking about my dogs. You're talking about where I live. You're talking about <laughs> things I've done. Like you have spent time clearly being mentored by me before I've ever had a conversation with you. Mm -hmm. You're phenomenal. like the star freaking student right now. This is what more people need to do. More, most people will sit at their homes and be like, I can't get around the millionaires. I can't get around the people who are better than me. Like we're right here living on the internet, just like you, there's a pandemic. Exactly. Like, if I want Richard Branson's time, I should consume all of his stuff so that the moment that I have a moment to speak to him, mm -hmm. I can say, oh my gosh, this one time you did bop, 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 and bop, 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 and on a Wednesday, you bop, 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 he's like, oh my God, that's so, like, like, I don't know. I feel very respected by you right now. Like, I really appreciate that. So uh, not to say I need to, like, not that I'm better than you. I just really appreciate you taking the time to actually consume me before being like, can you tell me what my DMO should be? Like, I don't know. Let's in it. You could probably tell them the episode of the podcast more than me, you know, like, I think that's cool. So oh, awesome. Well, I'm going to make you proud this year, girl. I'm going to, I'm going to text you with my income for what it is now and what it's going to be this time next year. Let's go. So from GoPro um, and also other different um, things I've consumed over the years, we want the people that we're spending our time with mentoring to be three things. Let me know if you agree with this or if you would elaborate to be willing, to be coachable and to be hungry. Are I don't even need to write it down. I mean, like that is <laughs> that. I mean, okay. Eric's my mentor straight out of his mouth. Um, he made me cry right before I went on stage at GoPro, by the way, when he was I like, identified me as this is my star student. You know, oh. when you like want a student who does every, I was like, 
she made me so proud. I'm like, oh my God, my dad's proud. Like it felt like my dad's proud of me. So, um, it, it is those three things. It's not who's got the most money. It's not who's the most talented. It's not who's got the, the best background, the best Rolodex, the best, no, it's none of that. I did not, I had, I joined direct sales with 200 Facebook friends. They were all from high school or college or family. Yeah. And now you see the global reach of what's been created. It was because I was willing. I was, I was, it, you could tell, anybody could tell me no. And I was just not going to quit. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to quit. I was just willing to do the work. I was super, super coachable. If you said jump, I wasn't like, Hey, hold on a second, Krista. How high are we talking about jumping? <laughs> because I don't have proper shoes on. I am feeling like my joints are a little squeaky right now. Like need some WD four. No, I was like, how high? Yeah. And then the hunger. I mean, I still have the hunger. Can't nobody tell me nothing about my hunger, yeah. um, but that, that is what it takes. It's not all of these little, the, the other things are very easy to create excuses inside of, but they're not going to get you what you want or where you want. So the willingness, the hunger and the coachability. Yes. Yeah. Done period. A thousand percent. And I'm, I'm really grateful. Like, well, Jeremy Stansfield, he, um, he's a colleague of mine and he was talking about the fab five. So now I take the willing, coachable and hungry as the, like the check marks for who's, who I'm going to spend the most time with. Right. Um, but no, it's, it's the hunger piece that, um, like you, I am naturally born like striving and thriving and craving more. And it's the hunger is there. And I know that that is like, I mean, they're all, they're all equally important, but for me, that's the one I'm like highlighting. So how, like, how does someone become more hungry? If you and I are naturally just like hungry people and we want to create more, we have that, that inner drive and ambition. Is that something you can encourage someone to connect to? I mean, you can always encourage them to, I think that goes back to the dream conversation. The problem yeah. is that hunger is that innate thing that makes you get up when you don't want to. Yeah. You know, hunger is that, oh my God, there's gotta be more out there for me. The hunger is the, it's, it's YOLO. It's not yo too. Hunger is all of these things that you, it's the one thing I can't teach. Yeah. Yeah. I can teach you how to sell. I can teach you how to recruit. I can teach you how to run a zoom call. I can yeah. teach you how to do a podcast. I can teach you skills to go live. Yeah. I can't teach you to want it. No, you can't. So that's when, like, when we were doing the exercise at GoPro to like, you know, Eric was having us set our goal and then double it and then double the income again. And then, you know, I was at that point, I really wanted to throw up. And, but that was the, that's the exercise. And like, how Krista, how bad do you want that? How bad do you want that lifestyle? And then after the first session, I was crying. I literally walk upstairs to my husband. He's like, babe, how's it going? And I'm like, <laughs> okay, so I had this vision. And then it was like this vision of like me bringing my boys to like this crazy estate mansion home that I would never even consider putting on the vision board. And I had them kind of blindfolded. And, you know, this is my whole vision during the, the first session of GoPro. Mm -hmm. And, and then we took off and this is, I'm, I'm telling my husband and we took off their little blindfolds. And I said, this is our new home. And then I start crying. Like, as I'm telling my husband this, and then I was like, babe, I've seen a much bigger vision for ourselves. Like, I know that we're successful. I know we're comfortable. I know that we've created freedom and health and all these beautiful things, but there's so much more and it's time to claim that. And that, like, I have that hunger, but that made it, right? Vision, like you said. I mean, you saw it. You saw your baby's faces in the home that you believe that they deserve to have. And I think that's really, that's strong. Like what I just said because there are a lot of moms and a lot of dads and a lot of people who won't do it for themselves. Like you got to a certain point for yourself. We mm -hmm. all do, right? That's the healthy yeah. ego we all have. You wanted to be able to have the freedom, pay the, pay the bills, not stress out financially. That's achieved like check. Check. But then when you start seeing things for your kids, like that's the house they deserve to live in. There's, there's more people I've mentored and coached that they won't do it for themselves. And as soon as I'm like, well, don't you think your kids, it might be nice if they have their own bedrooms? Then they're like, oh, what did you say? Now, now you got me. Like, now you got me. Like, yes. It, that, that's a game changer. 
Yes. That, but they and that's the hunger. Have, they've got to have the hunger though. Because mm-hmm. they're every mom will say yes to that. Every dad will say yes to that. Yeah. But yeah. they actually have to see it. They have to so see it. That's why you were so emotional. Mm-hmm. Because when you closed your eyes or did whatever you did, you saw you you just it's it's just different. Yeah, it's just different. And since then, I've been working with the team at 7 a.m. Like, yep, we're up at 7 a.m. Meet you on Zoom. We'll do some inviting together. And people are like, what? You know, but then some of the people, they're there. They're with me. They're hungry, right? It's it's next level. So we got to be willing, coachable, and hungry. So um, I'm, we're almost near the end of our time together. And I really, really appreciate it. I just have a couple more questions here. Um, in terms of like transformation, can you recall someone that you've worked with on your team that maybe um unintentionally like you underestimated to some degree but they completely blew your mind because they got connected to that hunger does anyone come to mind and i have a whole bunch one of my favorite stories though is that i i believe this i actually wrote an instagram post yesterday about my dad about this but i believe people can change if they want to so Mm -hmm. i know a lot of people are like people don't change yes they do i mean we change as long as you're personally developing you're changing but Um, one of my favorite stories, her name is Brittany. She's one of our top leaders. She hasn't just transformed in the hunger, desire, willingness, coachability aspect. She's transformed as an entire person. And I think a lot of that came from, um, leading me leading so much with empathy and in a place of it's so come as you are. Like, I want you to find your path. I want you to find your way. I want you to build this, you know, to whatever it looks like for you. And I mean, when I talk transformation, I'm talking like she, this is going to sound so crazy and people who know Brittany know it's true. So like, I'm not saying anything people don't know or she doesn't put out there, but like, she was racist. She was homophobic. She was an angry, angry woman wondering why nobody wanted to join her team. No recruits, none. Like she was selling some product because she had, you know, a great physical transformation, but no, everyone was like, hell no, I don't want to do business with that girl. And so her hunger changed when she started to realize humans are so much more alike than we are different. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as you start to actually lead with that heart, that, that empathy, that caringness, that love, everything shifts. And so her big shift though, also is from GoPro with the, with visualization was a different moment of visualization. But for the first time, she finally closed her eyes and she saw, you know, she's making multiple six figures a year, but now, but she saw, um, so she went from like being terrible to all of those transformations to multiple six figures, stuck at multiple six figures, which is not a bad place to be stuck. Uh, but then she finally closed her eyes and she saw one of her daughters on one side of her husband, her other daughter on the other side of her husband, her husband in the middle as she walked across the stage with her million dollar trophy. And I was like, that's it. It's just like you said with the house. Mm-hmm. When you see it, it's done. It, yeah. when, you, when, when the vision is actually there, when you see it, when you can feel it, when your mind starts to like conjure up stuff like a witch basically, right? And like spit it back out again. Um, when you feel it in here, nothing is gonna stop you. And I had that conversation with her. I'm like, then it's done. She's like, wow. I believe that for the first time ever. Like it's done. Wow. You can't, you can't, you can't tell somebody who believes it on such a fundamental core level mm-hmm. that their visions and goals don't make sense because it's not supposed to make sense for you. It's supposed to make sense for me. Thousand percent. That's amazing. So that, that just speaks so hugely to our profession. Like that, that's like network marketing. There's no which way around it. If you're not developing as a person, your income's not growing. People right? understand that though. That is one of the incredible people will spin in circles at a rank forever. Yeah. Not understanding they're either just taking a ton of messy action, which messy action is great. I love some ignorance on fire, but like Eric said, turn it into knowledge on fire at some point yeah. for God's sake, right? They'll spin and action, 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 action. They'll never develop. Like this is so mm-hmm. common. It's like, you've got to learn some skill sets. You've mm-hmm. got to learn how to speak to people. You've got to learn how to have empathy. You've got to learn how to lead. You've got to learn how to love people that are hard to love. You've got mm-hmm. to learn patience. You've got to learn emotional intelligence. It's not about how smart you are. It is about how emotionally intelligent you are and how much you can adapt because this is a business of constant adaptation. Just Absolutely. knowing who your mentor is. I mean, I guess you've, you've been around for a couple of years and your level of success. Like, it's constantly being disappointed and then how you respond. A thousand percent. <laughs> That's 
horseshit. Pissed off. All right, how am I going to respond? What the hell? How am I going to respond? Oh my God. How am I going to respond? Wow, another person who does nothing. How am I going to respond? Whoa, we got a good one. How am I going to respond? Like yes, everything yes, is yes. Oh my God. So good. Okay. One thing that you want. So if anyone who's listening there, I know we have a lot of network marketers who listen. They want to go pro. They want to think bigger. They want to be on the path to, um, you know, stop by where I'm six figure, seven figure, million dollar. They want to, they want to do it all, but they want to think bigger. What is one thing you want them to do? What's their homework? Uh, your homework, if you want to think, well, think bigger and do bigger are two different things. So think bigger, mm -hmm. Um, I would get out your, your Zillow app. I would get out your Pinterest app. I would make some vision boards on there. I would do some, I'm a tactical person. So I'm actually, it's end of year. So I'm going to be making my actual vision board. Uh, mm -hmm. But I would be, I would be dreaming bigger if we want to think bigger. Um, I would set your circle of five and I would declare who they are. You can mm -hmm. even message them. Like find your five people that you virtually want to surround yourself with in 2021 and actually do it. Every single freaking notification turn on if you want to be more like Tony Robbins, then why don't you follow everything he does? Yeah. You'll start to pattern your language around him because you're consuming so much of him. So turn the freaking notifications on every live, every post, every story, every everything, every book they put out, like whatever. You better become the student of the people you want to be like. That's what you have to do. Um, and then I would just say, uh, you got you to declare it. So the action step is not only consume that stuff, but start to declare it and then take the action steps towards it. So you need to match your daily, you know, methods of operation, your daily um, income producing activities, your daily, whatever, whatever it may be for you around those things. So if you say you're going to make a million dollars next year, you better reverse engineer it now, figure out how much you need to make a month, find out how much you need to make a week, find out how much activity you need to do a day. Some of you say you want to make a million dollars a year. You don't even know how much money that means a day. Yes. You have no freaking idea what that means per day that you need to make, but you're saying, oh, I'm going to make a million dollars this year, but are you really? Yeah. Are you really then? Uh, and then check yourself. Are my actions I'm saying I'm going to do, are they actually lined up with what I'm saying is important? So I think it starts in your mind. You change your mind, you change your entire life, change your actions around it. Everything shifts. Uh, so important because that's what happens after a big event. People come out, I'm going to be this diamond. I'm going to be this. And I'm like, what, what did you do the last 24 hours? A thousand percent. So huge. Okay. What are you claiming for 2021? Let's, let's hear it. What are your big moves? All right. I mean, I'll talk network marketing. This is network marketing. Eric yes. helped me set, set a goal. Uh, so my goal for 2021 is to make $12 million in my network marketing company. So the way I do that is by focusing on hitting the $2 million a month mark by December, 2021. So yes, but the cooler goal though, the cooler goal is um i said three and then eric was like that's terrible so 10 million dollar earners annual earners um that i will be personally mentoring in my business for 2021 10 million okay amazing well who's that lucky 10 in your business that is incredible thank you jesse Lee, oh so it's much. easy i got the list right here boom oh <laughs> my gosh you be prepared if you're not prepared you will fail so. sending all of them so much love and encouragement and they've got the best mentor in the game literally so thank you jesse lee so much for sharing your time your wisdom for for being online like so much per day i have all, all of your notifications on and it's so it's easy for me to tap into your brilliance so thank you again and um i'm gonna make you proud girl i'm gonna make you proud I love it. Well, you already have. Thank you for being a student of the game. And thank you for having me on here. I had a great time. Awesome. Thanks, Jesse Lee. You're welcome.